Shalom, Kahala Yahawa, Bashem Yavshai, Bashem Rukal Kadash, double honors to my teachers, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and mercy to the elect, who are the house of David reborn again in this generation, and Shalom to the 130 Yasharala, who today are known as the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, who before losing their true heritage were known as and still are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Holy Bible. In today's lesson, we're going to talk about this false messiah known as Ben Ami, and we're going to talk about what is happening to his uh, congregation that flew to Jerusalem or to Israel to try try to reclaim our ancestral land back, which goes against prophecy. But before we get into that and watch these videos, let's go ahead and read the scripture. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall save you. Right? This scripture here is part of the curses which would fall upon our people, the Negroes, Latinos, Native Indians, the Israelites, if we failed to keep the commandments which was uh, given to us by, uh, by Moses, uh, you know, for the Lord. Right? Now, ultimately, obviously, we understand that we didn't keep these, these uh, laws, which is why we got sent into slavery again, right? This is why this term Egypt, again, is used, right? Egypt is representative of bondage, slavery, okay? And the ships that we went on is, uh, was prophecy that played out, right? When you had the Northern Kingdom, the Latinos and the Native Indians, they came over here to the Americas, uh, on ships, right, where we eventually would, would end up in slavery once the the uh, Spaniards and the conquistadors came over here and, and, and subjected us to slavery. And then later on, the Southern Kingdom, uh, the Negroes, uh, they came over here on the North Atlantic slave ships. Part of history played out, right, fulfilling this prophecy, okay? And another bit of prophecy which has not yet been played out, right, which is that the Lord would actually take us back to the land hasn't happened yet because of this, right? It says, thou shalt see it no more again, right? Yes, you have some Negro, Latino, Native Indians that do go back to Israel on vacation, right? You know, you, you had a few out there that visited the Holy Land, but you've only done it as visitors in your own ancestral homeland, right? These people here, uh, you know, they're on the verge of being kicked out, right? Even though they're trying to go back to claim that land, it's not working for them, man. And they started this back in the 60s, right? It's about the same time when Abba Bivens uh, started his great work, right? C continuing the, 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 the work which the Lord had set for us to, to preach this gospel, right? To, to continue the Great Commission as it's re been referred to. But let's go and watch this video to show you what the African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem are now facing because they decided to go against prophecy. Now, amidst the noise of the recent clashes with Palestinians, another crisis is going mostly under the radar. Dozens of members of the African Hebrew Israelites, believing to be descendants of an ancient Israelite tribe, now facing deportation. The Interior Ministry reportedly giving upwards of 46 families just two months to leave the country despite having permanent residency status. Joining me now with more, though, is Hebrew Israelite community representative Ashrael Moore. Ashrael, thank you so much for being with us. Now, you, you just came out of a meeting, I understand, with the Minister of Interior. What was discussed in the meeting, and, and were there any developments? Well, uh, first of all, good afternoon to you, and thank you for having me, and good afternoon to all of our uh, viewing audience. Uh, just a bit of uh, uh, accuracy. We were not meeting with the Ministry of Interior. Uh, we were meeting with the Deputy Minister of uh, internal security who's a personal friend of the communities 
uh, and who's looking forward to assisting us. He's uh, from the Ethiopian community, Beta Israel. And what we discuss, uh, very simply, just so you can have a general picture, yeah. you see, we have approximately 135 people right now who uh, have up, upward of about uh, 50 days now to be out of the country. Now, when we look at these people, we're considering you have those who've been in Israel since 1969, 1970. You have children and second and third generation of their children who've been born in Israel who don't have any legal status in any other country in the world. Uh, you have those who have matriculated through the, uh, through the systems of Israel, most notably the military, and their either uh, family members or parents are up for uh, deportation. There's a situation here that we've tried to settle with the Ministry of Interior, and we've tried to settle it for the last 53 years. But somehow, some way, we've always run into stumbling blocks uh, where they would just not allow us to do so. And this time around was uh, a bit stranger because they gave us a feeling that they actually wanted to settle the, the cases. Mm -hmm. And um, we were in this situation with them for approximately a year now, since August of last year. They requested that we provide to them a listing of the um, those who are up for uh, not deportation, but those who do not have any legal status here in Israel right now, and they'll settle the cases. But guess what they received uh, in turn? They received a deportation note, letting them know that they have up to 60 days to be out of the country. So, so what what changed? How is it possible to remove this residency status at, in in cases such as this? And why again? Why just these 46 families? You see, it's not just the 46 families. In 2014, when then uh, Minister of Interior Gidon Saab came to Dimona to visit us, he wanted to settle uh, all of the cases. Because those who uh, immigrated to Israel in 1969, they in immigrated under the law of return. But the law of return, and they received legal citizenship, not status just, mm -hmm. legal citizenship. But the law of return changed in 1970, and then that law was no more relevant for us. So. Those who had citizenship, their citizenship was revoked, first of all, and then we began the legal battle. Now, in 2014, Gidon Saab wanted to put uh, a close to this situation once and for all, and he began the process, actually, began to settle cases, but he just didn't get around to everybody because he was just in, uh, in office for a year and a half. And when Arie Derry re returned to the office, everything that Gidon Saab had begun, he absolutely annihilated, and the process for deportation, I think, actually started then in 2015 when they simply just uh, drug the cases out up until 2020 when they allowed us once again to come to speak to them. And then they gave the impression that they were willing to now settle everything once and for all, and then we are now served deportation notes. So my final question to you is, do you, do you think that this is a technical issue of, of some sort, or do you think there's maybe more political or even religious uh, uh, motivations behind these decisions? And might it even have anything to do with, with the smaller held belief am amongst the community that the black Hebrew Israelites are the true descendants as opposed to uh, uh, other white appearing Jews? I think it's very simple, you see. Uh, we have not came up on these obstacles because we are not part of the whole house of Israel. We have not experienced all of these difficulties uh, just because we, um, we, you know, we, we have our different beliefs in, in regards to how we should keep the laws of the Bible. Uh, we have a very specific feeling about this and we feel that we're just not wanted here in Israel. Uh, the color of our skin plays a very big part in it, obviously, because we're not the only community here in Israel who's experiencing uh, such difficulties. Even the Ethiopian community is experiencing uh, their own difficulties in their own way. Uh, the, the policies of immigration in Israel says, obviously, that those who were born in Israel and have no other status in any other country is uh, eligible for citizenship. And in 2002, Ariel Sharon reassured the then uh, congressman that um, uh, that everybody who was born in Israel would actually receive citizenship. But obviously that has not happened. So it's been a continual uh, process of trying to actually uproot us from Israel. And uh, I think we've reached a, a peak at this moment. And I'm happy that it's catching the kind of attention that it's catching because it has to come to an end. All right, well, I'm happy to be a part of it, and uh, I wish you the best in this, in this battle with the government. Ashrael, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me.
So there you go. You see now these Israelites who thought they could save themselves, right, by following this uh, false messiah here. They're now seeing what it is to deal with the devil, okay? Now, when I say false messiah, I'm saying this because, you see, these people here, you know, they believe Ben Ami was their messiah, right? Even right here, if you don't know how to read Hebrew, this word here, Hamashiach, that means the messiah, okay? They literally thought Ben Ami was there to save them, okay? And, uh, you know, but, you know, look what's happening now, right? right? This man has died, and uh, those people are now being kicked out of that land, right? But this is all a result of not understanding the Bible and not following it uh, in the way that it should be, be uh, observed, okay? These people here, though they may, may have been sincere, they are now receiving the judgment that the Lord is giving them, right? The, the, those Israelites who the Lord wants to perish here in Babylon the Great, they're being sent right back here to Babylon the Great to, to more than likely be sent here and destroyed. But who knows? There may be some of them, this may be a wake-up call, and they may, you know, once they get back here to the States, they may, uh, they may wake up and they may come and, and follow Great Millstone. But I doubt that, okay? Because um, cause look at this, man, right? The, the, the Lord let these people go over there to the land for over 50 years, like it tells you here, right? Because again, these people, they think they're in their kingdom already, right? So it's the, a glorious dedication to our kingdom pioneers celebrating 50 years of the great exodus. You know, first of all, this isn't the, the great exodus from Babylon the Great, okay? They, this is not it. This is a false Messiah who has led these people, right? This is Matthews uh, 24 and 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many, right? And that's exactly who ben Ami was. ben Ami is a false Messiah who has deceived many. And those many are not only these Israelites, but these other Israelites, which we're going to go and watch this video, so that way you understand who these Israelites are, that followed this man into the land of our enemies and are now serving them, okay? Let's go and watch this. They're officially known as the African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem. The way they tell the story, they were driven out of the Holy Land thousands of years ago by the Romans. Then they fled to Africa, where they were enslaved and taken to America. We'd like to first thank the Holy One of Israel for blessing us with this beautiful day in northeastern Africa. Amen. Their leader, Ben Ami Ben Israel, sees himself as a modern day prophet who brought his people back to their spiritual home. I'm motivated by my love, my love for the community, my love for Israel, and my love for all people. And it is my desire to present to them a peace plan that is based upon the words of the prophets. Around 2,000 black Hebrews, as they're called, have made their home in southern Israel. They're best known as singers, and by and large, that's how they sustain their community. Their modern day exodus began in 1966, a time of racial violence in America. Back then, Ben Ami was known as plain old Ben Carter, a bus driver in Chicago. A bus driver who had a vision. And uh, the angel Gabriel did come to bring the word of God that 
it was time to start the journey back to the promised land and to establish the long-awaited kingdom of God. And uh, the angel Gabriel did come to bring the word of God that it was time to start the journey back to the promised land and to establish the long-awaited kingdom of God. And uh, the angel Gabriel did come to bring the word of God that it was time to start the journey back to the promised land and to establish the long-awaited kingdom of God. This is Galatians 1 and 8. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. So Ben Ami says that the angel Gabriel told him that it was time for him to go and build the kingdom of God back in the promised land. Okay, that is not what the Bible says at all. Okay, this man followed the, the doctrines of devils, right? He is a false messiah that misled those people, right? And uh, for those people, you know, they would have known this if they actually would have studied the Bible, right? You see, what we have here at Great Millstone is mercy from the Lord that he spared us from these false prophets, okay? Because there have been many false prophets that have come uh, in the in the secession of, of this truth coming back to, to us, okay? Uh, when you look at this chart that I created, to, to help understand how this truth got back to us and who are the true leaders of the nation of Israel today, let's go and examine where Ben Ami actually comes in on, on this chart, okay? Now, when you understand, uh, you know, according to Jeremiah 17 and 4, that we would lose our heritage, that means that we would also lose, uh, not only, you know, knowing who we were, but we would also lose the understanding of the Bible, the power that it gives us, right? The the uh, wisdom that it instills into us, that would be gone. Well, when the Lord, you know, finally brought the Southern Kingdom over here through the North Atlantic slave ship or slave trade, right? The truth came with with all the, with a lot of those brothers, okay? Right, because there was a lot of slaves who actually understood that we were the Hebrew Israelites, okay? And this truth eventually got to this slave blacksmith named Gregory Prosser. And Gregory Prosser eventually, his teachings went on to influence Nat Turner, and then Frank Cherry, and then, and then so on and so on, to eventually it got to this man named Wentworth Arthur, right? Wentworth Arthur was the, the I think one of the founding uh, members of a school known as the Commandment Keepers. Okay, and the commandment keeper was a school that had, you know, that they studied the Bible. They had, you know, they had built upon what they had learned from their from the previous people who had that this truth had come on. But at this point, the truth was still in its early phases of of, of being, you know, fully realized again, right? Because at this point. This school still was was learning Yiddish, right? The the language of our enemies, the so-called Jews, right? These Ashkenazis, right? The, the the Amalekites or Edomites, as the Bible refers to them as, right? They also did not believe in the New Testament, right? This is why they don't believe in Yahweh Shai. They don't believe in the Messiah, right? They believe that a Messiah is still to come, and that's because they are following the ways of these so-called Jews. Who, uh, who have clinged on to, to the Old Testament, right? And uh, who and this is why uh, their teachings are off, right? They also believe that uh, the that all the 12 tribes are all Negro, right? So a lot of times when you hear uh, uh, like a, a fool out there talking about, it's only the, about the Old Testament, that all 12 tribes are Negro and, and you know, they either are, have a Yiddish name or they are speaking, Yiddish, right? They're they're saying Yahuwah, Ben, or all, all these other 
you know, Yiddish words? Well, their teachers come, you know, from the commandment keepers, right? And more than likely, they come from this guy right here, right? Ben Ami and his African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem, right? They also go by uh, KOI, the kingdom of Yah, right? These people, uh, not only do they take on the, the sigil of the, 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 the Ashkenazi Edomites, but they, they, they've taken on their, their, their religion because they don't study um, or they don't study the New Testament people. They study basically Judaism, right? But, you know, they merge in some of the truth with it, right? As you've seen from those videos, right? They do understand that they are the, the original Israelites, right? But they're going off, right? They're, they're in the land of their enemies, right? Which was, it, you know, which is our ancestral land. But they're over there uh, while it's occupied, man. And they're serving in his army, okay? You know, you've seen plenty of those of those uh, images that they showed where you have a bunch of uh, Judites who are all serving in Edom's army, man, right? But see, like I said, man, those people who went over there, they would not have been misled if they had listened or followed Abba Bivens who left the commandment keepers. Because you see... Just as the Lord awoke Abram, you know, while he was at his in his father's house in the land of Ur, and he told him to come up out of his father's house and stop worshiping those idols, right? He he basically did the same thing to uh, Abba Bivens, where he basically removed him from the commandment keepers, man, because Abba Bivens was looking into the New Testament. He was understanding that Yiddish wasn't the uh, the, the 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 proper language, right? He understood. That, that the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Indians, that, or that the Latinos and Native Indians did have something to do with the 12 tribes, right? And then eventually, uh, Arya uh, came with the 12 tribe chart, right? Because you see, when Abba Bivens left, the truth left with him, right? The Holy Spirit left with Abba Bivens, and, they, and he established the ICUPK, okay? And from that, we got the seven heads, right? Which eventually, um, you know, from notably Ari, um, High Priest Arya, High, High Priest Yaquan, and King Masha came from that school, right? And again, you understand that the Lord again divided the school, right? And from that, he pulled King Masha, who eventually, you know, uh, had the House of David, okay? And from the House of David, right, you had. The IUIC, the House of Israel, or HOI, and Great Millstone, GMS, come out from that school, right? But again, the Lord went with Great Millstone. It is very obvious, right? Because IUIC and HOI, they took that 501c3 tax exempt status, man. They took the, they made a covenant with the devils, okay? And this is why uh, GMS. Is where the truth is at. This is this is why we got the hundred percent truth, people, because the Holy Spirit is dwelling with us, right? Because we're telling it like it is. This is Jeremiah sixteen and fourteen. Actually, I'm gonna start on thirteen. Therefore, will I cast you out of this land into a land that ye know not, neither ye nor your fathers. And there shall ye serve other gods day and night, that where I will not show you favor. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahweh Bashim Shai, that I shall no more, that it shall no more be said, Yahweh Bashim Shai liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but Yahweh Bashim Shai liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands whether he had driven them and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. All right, and that's the point. All right, see, this is the great next exodus that will happen. This prophecy has not yet happened, right? But those people those Israelites who are now dwelling and about to be kicked out of uh, you know, Israel by, by their enemies because they trusted them, right? They, they thought this applied to 
to bet on me, right? But they didn't realize right here where it says, I will bring them again, right? So you see, it's not for a man to tell you to jump on a plane and go back to Israel. No, it's for the Lord to take us back our, himself, okay? Because it tells you in the, in the Bible that the prophecy will play out that the Lord will show up, right, for the second coming, right? And he shall save the 144,000 elect plus the one-third of Israel and, and take them up into ships. And that's where the destruction is going to come to America, Babylon the Great, and Israel, right? The, the, the whore and the, the beast are going to be burnt up, right? And then, then the Lord shall bring the what is referred to as New Jerusalem, right? Which are the, the remnant, the one-third and 144,000 Israelites back down to earth and put them back in the land of Israel. That's when we're going to be able to dwell there forever, okay? Like it tells you here, Amos 9 and 15, And I will plant them upon their land, and they and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith Yahweh Bashimashai, thy power. Right? So you see, this is all in the Old Testament, man. See, but these people are now being pulled out of their land, right? And why is that? Because they're not following the prophecy. Because they ultimately followed this false prophet, which is now the Lord is, is making it abundantly clear that Ben Ami was a false teacher, right? Who misled many people and, and basically are going to cause them to perish, right? Because look, this is what the actions of Ben Ami have accomplished, man. Right? They are now wearing little kufis, and sh or I'm sorry, little uh, yarmulkes, man, right? Having their head covers when they shouldn't be covered, right? Holding and waving the flag of their enemies serving in their army right serving their enemies man when when the lord made it clear that they weren't they, they shouldn't be doing that and they should be here in babylon with the rest of us man taking their punishment as 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 they can right see what ben Ami's, uh, uh school is is like imagine is like remember when you would when you were a kid right and, and and you and your your siblings would get in trouble it's like one of those your your brother or your sister you know trying to you know play all sweet with your parents and trying little by little to go into the living room while everybody's been uh commanded to to stay in the room and they're they're trying to be all nice and sweet you know with with uh your parents right so that way they can you know be let out of the room and they're there you know washing the dishes and doing everything all nice but eventually they get screamed at and they get put right back into the room that's exactly what's happening to uh, the, the AH, uh, uh, what is it? The African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem. That's exactly what's happening to them, man. This is Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Right? You followers of Ben Ami are not going to save yourselves, man. Right, and you Old Testament Israelites, you're in a whole world of trouble, man. You are in trouble, right? As the, the brother from North Carolina says, man. Right, you are in trouble because you have not, uh, uh, you know, hearkened onto the words of the Lord, man. You've only listened to the Old Testament, right? And because of that, you now have no Messiah to to save you, man. Right, because and you're there trying to save yourself, and this is the result of you trying to save yourself, right? What did that man say, right? In the interview, he said, he said he had that uh, he they kept coming upon stumbling blocks, right? For some reason, they just kept hitting stumbling blocks. Well, why is that? Because the Lord is against those people, man. Right? That's why, uh, you know, because if they would have been truly uh, followers of the Bible, then they would have understood what the Bible says, man: to never trust thy enemy. Right, because what did those Israelis uh, ask them? They asked them to give them a list of of the people who had un, unsecured uh, resident status, and then what did, ended up happening? Those people ended up all getting deportation notices, right? Because they trusted their enemy. Now they're in trouble, man. This is Ezekiel 
11 to 17. Therefore, say, thus saith Yahweh Bashimah Shai, power, I will even gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries where ye have been scattered, and I will give you the land of Israel. Okay? The Lord is going to save us. The Lord is going to place us back in the land of Israel. Right? So, I just wanted to touch upon this, Akim. I thought it was a, a, a good bit of, uh, of information about these other, uh, you know, schools of the Hebrew Israelites out there. Just to show you, man, how the Lord is starting to come up against these other schools, man. He already got the IUIC, uh, the ISUPK. You just seen what he did to Sakari during the Passover. And now, look what he's doing to the AHIJ, okay? So, with all that, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahushai, Bashem, Dash, double honors of my teachers, the apostles, and elders of Great Millstone that have the 100% truth. And Shalom to the 130 Yashirala and the elect. Shalom.